Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to be taking a look at inorganic ions. So a lot of students panic when they see this in lower six because you haven't actually learned where these ions are used within biological concepts and biological processes yet. So at this stage in lower six, the only thing that you need to know about these is the chemical symbols for those cations and anions, which is actually quite easy to do especially if you have chemistry or you're studying chemistry alongside this subject. Um, if you're looking at this video as an upper six student and you're the majority of the way through the entire course, it's a really good idea to pause the video and try and create a mind map or a list to note down any, any biological processes that involve any of these cations or anions. Um, I've listed a couple of processes in the next couple of slides in which each of these ions are used. Like I said, you'll only know how they work in those processes if you're pretty much near the end of the two year course or when you're in upper six halfway through, you'll have a good idea of the majority of, of those processes. So uh, to start off with, these are the cations. Um, I'm not going to go through the symbols because they're quite self-explanatory, um, but those listed after their, um, the symbols there are the different processes in which those cations are involved. Now in the link below my video, what I'll do is I'll post links to each video where I've covered some of these topics to help you recap and help you revise for any exams that you've got coming up as well. So here are the anions ones. And again, I'll post any links to those below in the description to help you with your revision. So there we have it. Those are the inorganic ions you need to be aware of. Those are the formulas that are listed there and the processes that have been listed in the previous slides. I will also post some links in the description below. Guys, good luck with your exams and all the best.